25 years ago, a gold cartridge called The Legend of Zelda hit the NES and gaming hasn't been the same since. While most games at the time focused on high scores, Shigeru Miyamoto's masterpiece courted our imagination. The Legend of Zelda gave us the sprawling world of Hyrule, an epic quest, deadly puzzles, and a franchise that would stand the test of time. The Zelda franchise has produced some of the top games of all time and has left an indelible mark on everyone who's ever played it. The original Legend of Zelda was a seminal game, and we're still seeing adventure games that copy that basic pattern of gameplay. Legend of Zelda is like a special game to me. Uh, I used to love it. Look at sword. <laughs> Going into caves and getting magic potions. Potions. Ugh. I am addicted to Zelda, and all of my friends were kind of like cult followers of Zelda. My brother and I made graph paper maps of the entire world and every single dungeon. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. The world of The Legend of Zelda grew more lush with every technological advance, but the more things change, the more they stay the same. When you hear that, doo -doo 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 -doo, like mystery sound, like it still makes people incredibly happy. <laughs> Our connection to Link is primal. A small town kid drawn by happenstance, destiny, or love into the adventure of a lifetime. But it would all be for nothing if the gameplay sucked. Link mastered the 2D world, but it was the N64 title, Ocarina of Time, that proved Zelda could be the gold standard in any number of dimensions. It was the game that bridged the gap between my youth and my adulthood. Ocarina of Time was just wide open, that Link could go really anywhere. It made it feel like the game was special and unique mm -hmm. and different and you wanted to play it. I said Ocarina of Time. I hope that's right. It's Ocarina. It's not Ocarina, it's Ocarina. Why did they choose an ocarina? It doesn't make any sense. The oboe of time. That would have been better. An oboe of time. Wind Waker took us on a cell shaded high seas adventure. Twilight Princess took a page from Lord of the Rings and gave us epic. Skyward Sword took us to the clouds, not to mention a whole mess of handheld titles. I think it's safe to say Link's been around the block a few times. You kind of felt like you were, you know, almost a Greek myth, uh, yet it was kind of a modern myth that was created by Miyamoto. Zelda is like another one of those games that's in history forever. As long as we have a trusty steed at our side, a master sword on our hip, and a fair wind at our back, where Link goes, we'll follow. There is good news in the world for anyone that has poor depth perception. Capcom has finally released its new 2D game for the GBA. You heard me correctly. Both of the glorious dimensions will be on display for all to see in The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. And they've never looked so good. <laughs> the world of Hyrule is holding a yearly festival when the inevitable happens. Zelda gets in trouble. She's turned to stone and once again Link has to save her. I always tell her, don't get kidnapped. Pfft, Legend of Zelda. Should be legend of that dumb can't stay out of trouble. Yes, Link is the bearer of a heavy burden. He must journey through the land to reforge a long broken sword. It is the only way to break the curse and free Zelda. I mean, why is it always called the Legend of Zelda? I'm the one doing all the work. I mean, I gotta fight for a subheading. Link to the past. Worst pun ever. The Minish Cap is your typical Zelda fair. You'll run around ripping up vegetation, <laughs> smashing vases, <laughs> and stepping on blocks. You'll also find some new friends in the Minish Village and a really annoying talking hat. A talking hat? A talking hat? you also do some other really, um, well, really odd things. Uh, can we show this? And an organ grinder from Nambla shows up in what has to be the most unfortunate positioning of a character in gaming history. Oh, Link, it's not worth it. Yeah, I did it, but I don't care. 
See this? This is my new girl. Who are you? Take that, Zelda. Come here, baby. <laughs> Oh, Zach, miss her so much! Oh, Zelda! Oh, God! Every fan of the Zelda franchise will love this game. The graphics are the best production the GBA has to offer. Capcom has brought new energy to the franchise while staying faithful to the formula. There is actually nothing bad to say about this game. Unless you count this. You're gonna go blind if you keep doing that. Hello, is Zelda there? Link, are you drunk? Just put her on the damn phone. Watch it, mister. Can you just tell her Link called and tell her the, the, the Legend of Zelda and the Minish Cap gets a five out of five? At SteelSeries, we make the headsets, mice, and keyboards that the world's best gamers win the most with. And we've been doing it since way back. It's up to you how far you go, but whatever you do, go for glory. Zelda and the girls, drinking a few brews, and we're all gonna laugh about this, Tingle, right? We're gonna laugh about it. But you're not gonna die on me. I'm hungry, let's get a taco. If you've never played The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, then something has gone horribly wrong in your gaming life. It is time to fix that mistake with Ocarina of Time 3D for the Nintendo 3DS. I know what you're thinking. Sure, Ocarina is a great game, but I already played it years ago. Wrong. Ocarina 3D has been upgraded in every possible way. Sadly, Navi is still as annoying as ever. <laughs> The environments are bursting with detail. Every chicken feels vibrantly alive. Even with the 3D turned off, the graphics are impressive. 
While the N64 version was pushing the system to its limit, Ocarina 3D feels like the game they wanted to make all along. There are tweaks and improvements around every corner. The ability to equip the iron boots on the fly finally makes the water temple tolerable. The only real gripe is that the motion tracking assisted aim is more of a hindrance than any real help. And while the 3D is truly gorgeous, it's not for everyone. Zelda is an epic game, and putting in long hours with the 3D enabled can cause eye strain depending on the gamer. In addition to the original game, Ocarina 3D also packs in the Master Quest and a Boss Challenge mode that allows you to relive your old conquests. It's amazing that after all these years, Ocarina still holds up as a masterfully designed game packed to bursting with creative idea after creative idea. Finally, there's a reason to own a 3DS, and it's called The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D, a 5 out of 5. Rumor has it, the ending of The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker leads directly into the upcoming DS game Phantom Hourglass. So we figured it's our civic duty to remind you how this fantastic voyage ends. In our humble opinion, Wind Waker has the best ending of any Zelda game ever, period. Once you get to Ganon's mysterious castle, which is submerged underneath the ocean, you face his three deadly forms. Form 1, Giant Puppet Monster. Form 2, Giant Spider. Form 3, Giant... Well, Giant whatever the hell this thing is. Defeat the Trinity of Evil, and you'll find Ganon back in human form on the roof. After a bit of philosophizing, the fight is on. What's cool is that Princess Zelda actually steps up to help you out. She shoots him in the back with arrows while you battle his crazy martial arts move. Play your cards right, and you too can be slamming your sword through Ganon's head. Ouch! Now you tell me that's not mature. The reason we dig this ending so much is that it's bittersweet. The King of Hyrule makes the decision to be buried with his beloved homeland and sends you and your lady friend back up to the surface. Hell, you even feel sympathy for Ganon, who seems genuinely sad that all his plans have come to naught. After the credits, you see Tetra, aka Zelda, and Link sail off into the open sea together, setting up his adventures to come on the DS. There are some things you expect in a Legend of Zelda game. You gotta have sword play plenty. Puzzle solving is a must. And a Link game without throwing a few chickens isn't a Link game I want to play. Touting all that, plus a piratical plotline, we're pleased to welcome The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass into the canon. Phantom Hourglass is the direct sequel to Wind Waker. Here's the story so far. After going through all the trouble of rescuing Tetra slash Princess Zelda from Ganondorf, what does she do the minute you're back on the boat together? Oh, come on, I just saved your entitled princess butt. Ugh, I guess I'll try and rescue her again. You have Link's usual arsenal to help you. You got your sword, your boomerang, and your bombs. What's changed, though, is how you deploy all of these. Gone are the days of the directional pad and A, B, X, Y buttons. Using your thumbs is so 1998. The stylus will take care of every action in the game from running and fighting to messing with the local poultry. Since you're in the same world as Wind Waker, you still have that enormous ocean to contend with. The good news is that the advent of steam power in the Kingdom of Hyrule now allows you to choose the route around the islands. Thanks, Robert Fulton. You'll keep track of your progress on the top screen, which holds your map most of the time. In an inspired bit of design, though, you can pull the map down to the bottom screen and write on it, helping you remember patterns or clues to solving puzzles. In fact, with so much that's right about this game, we were shocked with one major problem. There's a temple you have to return to multiple times in the game, each time delving to a deeper level. But instead of letting you skip the parts you've already cleared, you have to run them again, with all the enemies on a timer. It's really the only blemish, but it's a major one. From the story to the action to the user interface, this is our favorite new Link game since 
Well, the last one, Twilight Princess, in case you've forgotten. The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass gets four angry chickens. Out of five. It's been too long since we've heard that sound. Meet the Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Twilight Princess finds Link slumming it, but an evil force called the Twilight has to screw it all up. Suddenly the lives of the good folk of Hyrule hang in the balance. If only they hadn't cut defense spending. Life is hard out here for a Hyrulean pimp. Monsters cruise the hood, Zelda has lost her party girl status, and Link gets turned into a wolf. You'll walk the lonely road of puzzles, unexplored lands, and Mortal Kombat is only a Zelda game can. The wolf form of our hero of time has learned some new tricks. His wolf senses can sniff out buried treasures or track characters by scent. Link's canine self is part of a greater animal motif, from spanking a giant baboon to conversing with chickens. The Legend of Zelda has peddled the same items from game to game for nigh on two decades. The Twilight Princess manages to reinvent these tried and true tools. Let me just say, iron boots plus magnetic rock equals awesome. Link has been schooled in the ways of badassery since his last outing. His sword work is vicious, including a kill move that is so, so satisfying. Give Ganon a message. Tell him I'm coming for him and hell's coming with me. The graphics are the chink in Twilight Princess's armor. It looks about as good as a high-end GameCube game. A stark difference from the next-gen graphical power the PS3 and 360 are vomiting forth. Gross. Somebody at Nintendo has seen Lord of the Rings several hundred times because Twilight Princess brings a Peter Jacksonian epicness to The Legend of Zelda. The game is long, with upwards of 40 hours of gameplay. There are tons of side quests to explore, and Hyrule's square mileage is large enough to make the Louisiana purchase blush. Nintendo has pulled off gaming on a grand scale. If you need some man Link lovin', Twilight Princess is the game you've been waiting for. Sword play, sniffing, switch work, it's got it all. Even a baboon smacking its own ass. The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess gets a five. Oh. Out of five. X-Play presents Games in 60 Seconds. I'm a farm boy. I never go on any adventures. I'm an evil goblin pig hybrid. I'll kidnap your loved ones. Must become a hero. Ugh. We're going to turn you into a wolf now. Awesome. Yeah, it hurts. I'm Princess Zelda. Here's what happened last week. Bitch, this is my kingdom now. I give up. Will you help me? I look good in green. Hey there, kid. Take off your shirt. I'll teach you sumo. But I... I said take it off. You'll never defeat me. No, you defeated me. That's exactly what I didn't want to happen. Now I can roam the countryside looking for random and helpful items. I got the hero's bow. Da na na na. Ball and chain. Ba na na na. Spinny top thing. Da na na na. Okay, the novelty's worn off. I'm so badass, I pulled the sword out of my own chest. Crap. I'm totally gonna have to fight that dude. Now you're totally gonna have to fight me. Sword chop! No! Now give me some sugar, baby.
I know a guy, and his name is Link. He likes to play games, and he likes to drink. But when he's not so drunk and also not complaining, he's wandering the woods, doing crossbow training. That's me. So you've eagerly purchased the Wii Zapper. Your Wiimote and your Nunchuck should easily fit into its sleek space age design. And this lovely lady is my assistant, Tingle. Tingle, Tingle, Kulu Limpa. Keep dancing, you slut. Come on. What a sad pair of human beings. To get people excited about this new innovation, Nintendo has included Link's crossbow training with every zapper. It's basically a demo to show you what the zapper can do. It's a simple game, shooting Gorons in the belly and blasting all sorts of woodland creatures. All right, Tingle, hold still. And let's see what this bad boy can do. Stand still, Tingle. Why are you moving around? I am standing still. Link's Inflame Liver Crossbow Training isn't the only game the Wii Zapper works with. There's Medal of Honor Heroes 2, where the Zapper can be used to turn and aim. But you still have to run around with the joystick, and then there's the reloading. With Resident Evil Umbrella Chronicles, it's more of the same. Lots of shaking, more annoying reloading, but there are zombies, which is always nice. Worry about that later. What have I done? I killed Tingle! <laughs> What have I done? I've killed this brave, unseemly, unshapely, 35-year-old grown man who dresses up like a fairy. I am so sorry. I know a guy, and his name is Link. He likes to play games, and he likes to drink. But when he's not so drunk and also not complaining, he's wandering the woods, doing crossbow training. I have issues. The Wii's life ends as it began in Hyrule. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword may well be the last major release for the best-selling console of the generation. If so, at least you can't say it didn't go out with a flourish. Skyward Sword takes place before all the other Zelda games, if that actually somehow matters. In this version of the legend, a goddess has split the world into the airborne land of Skyloft, where Link, Zelda, and their friends live, and the legendary surface, which nobody has seen for generations. As you might expect, Link is a bright-eyed youth with a crush on the girl with the old-fashioned name. Even if she can be a bit pushy sometimes. <laughs> Skyloft is an idyllic place that is unlike just about any other location in the Zelda series. The inhabitants get around using birds called Lothwings, and the best of the best get to be Knights of Skyloft. Being a knight mainly seems to consist of telling people they can't fly at night, but you gotta have goals in a small town. Naturally, right after Link passes the test to become a knight and starts making some headway with Zelda, she gets sucked into a windstorm of pure evil and vanishes. So Link suits up in the conveniently familiar knight outfit to track her down. And wouldn't you know it, he turns out to be some kind of chosen one. He picks up the goddess sword, which is imbued with an analytical artificial intelligence named Fi. She lacks the charm of Midna from Twilight Princess, but she'd clean up on skating with the stars. The world of Skyloft and the surface is pretty to look at and very cleverly crafted, but it is not without its flaws. The overworld of the sky is open and you can fly around in it as much as you like, but there's not really much to do up there besides enjoy the smooth flight controls using the Wiimote Plus. The surface is packed with puzzles and dungeons, but it's shockingly small. There are only three main areas and you'll retread old ground many times over the course of the game. It's still a long game, but some of that length is definitely padding and it feels smaller and linear as a result. Still, it's Zelda, and the story and setting are mostly there to serve the gameplay, which is fine, since the gameplay part is pretty great. Skyward Sword significantly changes up how you interact with Link. Most prominently, his sword is controlled by the Wiimote, and in fact, you can move it around one-to-one, -one, which is surprisingly satisfying. Actual swings lock the sword into one of eight preset attack animations, but this is used to the game's advantage. Many enemies demand precise use of the sword's angle. <laughs> In fact, the first boss will actually take your sword away if you're too sloppy about it. 
He also does this really creepy tongue thing. <laughs> You will have to become skilled at using the Wii Motion Plus with precision to succeed, and this is a very welcome level of challenge. Link also picks up a large arsenal of gadgets and tools, many of which are not new to the series, but you've never controlled them like this before. Each has a distinct and solid feel, and using them is never frustrating. Dungeon design is top quality, and many of the puzzles you encounter make direct use of the motion controls, like these eyes you have to make dizzy by swinging your sword in a circle. Some elements are bogged down by that padding problem, though. Link's shield can now break if it's overused, forcing you to run back to the Skyloft store to buy another one. You'll also collect a bunch of crafting items, which are used to upgrade items in a grindy and not fun crafting system that doesn't really seem to fit in a Zelda game. If all three titles had motion control integration this seamless and smooth, a lot of the complaints about the system would have never come up. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword gets a four out of five.